Let's work a couple of challenging long division problems. A, 30,154 divided by 82, and B, 174,000 divided by 60. We'll do A first. Let's set up the long division box for our first problem. So 30,154 goes inside the long division box. 3, 0, 1, 5, 4. Out in front goes the 82. We can also read this division problem as 82 divided into 30,154. Now, let's think about our four steps that we're going to repeat over and over. So, we need to get started with the divide into step. We want to think about how many times the number in front, the 82, goes into first the first digit, 3. Well, it doesn't even go into 3 once. Then we look at the first two digits, 30. It doesn't go into 30 even once. So, we need to look at the first three and think of that as 301. How many times does 82 go into 301? Now this is complicated enough that I'm going to have to make some guesses. And uh, sometimes when I have no idea on where to start, I just check by taking 82 times 5 and see what happens. Now 5 times 2 is 10. Write the 0, carry the 1. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 1 gives me 410. Well, too big, right? Way too big. What if I try 82 times 4? That will be smaller. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 8 is 32, so I have 328. Still too big. In fact, it is kind of interesting to notice here that if, you, if we think of 4 times 8 as 32, 4 times 80 is going to be 320, so 4 times 82 is going to be a little bit more than 320. So just by observing that 4 times 80 is 320, we can see that this 82 times 4 is too big. Let's go ahead and try three times. Now, before we go through the multiplication, 3 times 8 is 24. So 3 times 80 should be about 240. We should be close to 240. Let's see. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 8 is 24 we get 246. In fact, we're a little bit larger than 240. Now, 246 is smaller than 301, and so we know 82 goes into 301 three times. I write the 3 above the 1 in the 301. Then I multiply 3 times 82, and we have that. That's 246. After the multiply step comes the subtract step. We need to subtract. 1 minus 6 I can't do, so I need to borrow. Can't get anything from the 0, so I borrow from the 3. 3 becomes 2. The place to the right becomes a 10. Then I borrow from the 10. The 10 becomes a 9. The place to the right I add 10 on, so that becomes 11. 11 minus 6 is 5, 9 minus 4 is 5, and 2 minus 2 is 0 out front. So I get 55 after I subtract. After the subtract step comes the bring down step. I bring down the next place, I bring down a 5. After the bring down step, I go back up to divide into. How many times does 82 go into 555. Now, from what we've seen so far, what we figured out so far, I know it's probably going to be more than five times, because 
5 times 82 is just 410. What if I try 7 times here? 82 times 7. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 8 is 56. Plus 1 is 574. Well, that's a little bit too big. So I need to back up and try 82 times 6. 6 times 2 is going to be 12. Right, the 2 carry the 1. 6 times 8 is 48, plus 1 is 49. 7 times was too big. 6 times is giving me a number less than 555, so I know 6 is it. So I write the 6 above the 5 that I just brought down, and then I multiply 6 times 82. 6 times 82 is uh, 492. Just figured that out. And I subtract. 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 minus 9 I can't do, so I borrow. 5 becomes 4, and the 5 here becomes 15. 15 minus 9 is 6. 4 minus 4 is 0. After I do the subtraction, the next step is to bring down the next digit, bring down the 4. And I ask myself, how many times does 82 go into 634? Now, again, let's look over what we figured out so far. The, the biggest number we have here is 574. That was 82 times 7. I wonder if that's going to be good enough here. I'm going to go ahead and try that 82 times 7. 7 times 82 is 574. And now I have to subtract. Now, how do I know that I couldn't have used a larger number up there? Maybe I should have checked 8 times. Well, I can be certain that 7 was the right number to use if I look at what we get after we subtract, 4 minus 4 is 0. 3 minus 7 can't do. Got to borrow again. 6 becomes 5. I have 13 here then. Minus 7 is going to be 6. 5 minus 5 is 0. Notice that after I subtracted, I got 60. Well, 60 is less than the number out front. If you subtract, when you subtract, you should always get a number less than the number out front. And because I got a number less than 82, I know 7 was big enough. I know that 8 would have been too large. So, so far I have 367, and I have no more numbers to bring down, so 60 is my remainder. On the end of my answer, I write R60. 367, remainder 60, is our answer. Our answer for problem A is 367, remainder 60. That was a tough one. Let's move on to B now and do 174,000 divided by 60. To set up the long division box, now I need to place 174,000 on the inside. 174,000. Zero, zero, zero. I don't need to write the comma if I don't want to inside the long division box. Out front, I have 60. And let's start our series of four steps once again. So let's get started with the divide into step. How many times does 60, the number in front, go into the 1? Well, it doesn't go in at all, so we look at another digit. How many times does 60 go into 17? Still doesn't go in even one time, so we need to think about 174 here. How many times does 60 go into 174? Now, I know 
6 times 3 is 18. So can you see what 60 times 3 would be? You can write it out if you have to, but if you know 6 times 3 is 18, you should be able to guess that 60 times 3 is 180, right? 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 6 is 18. We get 180 for 60 times 3. Well, that's too big. We only have 174 to work with. 60 times 2, again, you bet you can do this in your head. 6 times 2 is 12, so 60 times 2 will be 120. It's kind of like a 12 with a 0 on the end. Or if you work it out, you get that same answer, 120. So 60 goes into 174 just two times. We write the 2 above the 4, and then we multiply. 2 times 60 is 120. And then we subtract 4 minus 0 is 4, 7 minus 2 is 5, 1 minus 1 is 0. We have 54 after we subtract. After you subtract, bring down the next digit. We bring down the 0. Now we have 540, and we want to ask ourselves, how many times does 60 go into 540. Well, that 54 should look familiar from your multiplication facts. I know 6 times 9 is 54. If 6 times 9 is 54, then 60 times 9 is going to be 540. I hit that number exactly. So I write a 9 up above the 0 that I just brought down. Multiply 9 times 60 is 540, and then subtract. 0 minus 0 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0, 5 minus 4, 5 is 0. I get just 0 when I subtract. Now it's easy to make a mistake here and stop. It feels like we just have zeros left. But you're not done with the long division process until you've brought down each of the digits from the number inside the long division box. We only bring them down one at a time, and I have two more digits to bring down, so I need to continue the long division process. Also, it's important to notice where we're writing the numbers up above. The 2 gets written above the 4, the 9 above this first 0, if you've lined up your columns well, it should feel like there are two spaces yet to be filled in up above. We need two numbers to be filled in those spaces before we're finished. So now let's just back up a bit here. We subtracted 540 minus 540. That was the subtraction step. After that comes the bring down step, meaning I bring down a digit, just one at a time. Now I know we just have zero here. 60 goes into zero, zero times. I write that zero up above. That's our divide into step. Next we multiply, zero times 60 is zero. Next we subtract, not very exciting, but it's not hard either, zero minus 0 is 0. After we subtract, we bring down again, one digit at a time. Bring down that last 0. After you bring down a digit, you do the divide into step, which means when you bring down a digit, you have to write a number up above. We still have 0. 60 goes into 0 times. We need another 0 up above. 0 times 60 is 0. Subtract 0 minus 0 is 0. And now, finally, we're done because we have no more digits to bring down. Our answer here is 2,900. Those two zeros on the end of our answer are crucial. And so for our second long division problem, we got the answer of 2,900. 
there was zero remainder, so we just give 2,900 as the answer.